Peasant Productions presents the Math of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, did I kind of continue along with this free will thing here? A um, couple of minor but major points to point out to people. Um, first off, like I said, I am the paradigm shift. I am the entity that clicked on the recycling button for your planet. Nobody else controls it. Gods can override, but there's certain issues of contract and construction and things like that you'd have to understand before you even begin to try and worry about saying something like that. Um, however, if you do want to jump up and down and say that I cannot be that person, remember, you have just declared yourself greater than the gods who employed me and brought me here and woke me up 58 years ago and told me this is what you're going to walk through, this is what you're going to see. And human arrogance, which is exactly what it is when a human being, a flesh and blood object, claims itself to be greater than something that can never be contained in a flesh and blood object. Okay. Um, if you want to understand the roots of that, it's very simple. Go look at all of your religions. The Pope can throw you out of the church and Christ will never look at you. The Iman. Only Muslims are good. And, okay, They're running around claiming that, go that gods are subservient to a human being. Hindu, Muslim, Jew, Christian, Catholic, are some of the most obvious ones to do this. Keep in mind, the Hindu religion was built around the caste system, okay? It is not built around being in connection with gods. It is built around the idea of the caste system, okay? Everybody is born on a certain hierarchy, and nobody ever moves up or down very much. You have to go through many, many lifetimes to go from an untouchable to a royal family. Reality check, no. You, you, you're a human being. You are dictating what the gods and what reality can do. But existence, I would say, I think would be a better way of putting it. What existence can do compared to what you want to claim as reality. You are literally no different than a scientist who sits there and says, Ah, there can't be anything outside of the universe because I can't see anything outside of the universe. You just explain that you have a limitation on your vision, therefore all of existence must live by that one simple thing that you don't have vision. That would be like a totally colorblind person or a dog or a horse or something that sees only in black and white doesn't see color suddenly declaring that anybody that can see color is a fraud okay you are denying something you do not understand you are denying something you cannot test you are denying something that you will not test because if you jump up and down like one of my, my so-called favorite trolls of all, um, Julia, you know, she starts out, oh, you're so wonderful, I'm so respectful of you as an artist, and da-da-da-da-da-da, and oh, by the way, my preacher down the street says, you can't say what you're saying about Revelation 2.17, because he doesn't believe that you, as a non-Christian, can have a mark that only a Christian's allowed to have. Excuse me, Julia, go back and read that passage. You have to hear everybody on the spiritual realm that talks to any and all churches of your planet. Therefore, how could I be a Christian in order to hear every god of every religion that has ever existed and probably ever will exist? So you see, the whole problem that you have is no matter what part of your society you look at, it is all designed around the idea that you do not question, you do not try, you do not do anything, and gods are not real because only human beings are allowed to tell gods what they can do. Therefore, a god, which is supposed to, by definition, be greater than a human being can imagine, cannot exist. 
only plastic Jesuses and minaret towers with, with imams, you know, demanding everybody jump up and down and get on their knees and, you know, face a certain direction and pray. Why is a God that is all-seeing that not even a sparrow can fall to its death without being seen? Was that sparrow baptized? No. Was that sparrow, you know, a, a, a devout Muslim going down and um, 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 type of stuff? Was he, was he a, a Hindu or a yogi? No. But needless to say, your, your, your literature of religion says that those things are all inside the God's view, but your religions all run around saying, "Oh, no, I didn't get you didn't get baptized as a Christian and a Catholic, so Christ can you know Jesus is never going to look at you. You cannot be there." And the Pope literally gets up and tells this to people for seventeen hundred years, and you people literally just, "Oh yeah, 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 boss, what did he say?" Okay. So you realize suddenly why truthful people and why free will is one of the last things that any religion talks about. This is why truthful people are extremely, extremely hated. That's why the United States, Donald Trump got up there and he literally wins the election, you know, he gets the vote. And within hours, 24 hours after he, you know, on Wednesday, you know, 24 hours after that election and all is closed, he had four Goldman Sachs employees on his, on his staff of advisors for, you know, the transition team of taking over the White House. Literally, the man claiming to be anti-corruption walks in with, you know, with the corruption, the Wall Street bankers. He's now got Rothschilds in there. He's got, you know, he's got the big oil companies running the EPA. He's got the big pharma running the FDA. And, you know, and he's got, you know, he's eliminated so many programs that are for the safety of people. It's incredible. And somebody like me that's a whistleblower, I'm literally outlawed and illegal in the United States now. So, how can anyone with their eyes open believe what that farce is? But you do. It's like I said about this town. You know, they, they understand that it's a farce. They do not care that their book of their religion says, You shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not go out and try and possess your neighbor's possessions or wife, boyfriend, whatever. You don't lie to the gods. You don't worship dead image, dead body images. Okay, you worship the energy entity of a god. Nothing else. You do. You, it does not say anything about walking into, you know, human made, totally into being religiously glorifying human achievement buildings as the only place where the gods see you. Okay, and. I don't care where you go on this planet, you will find somebody and someone's church that is more sacred than the tree outside that was created directly by the God. Yeah. Um, so you have all of this kind of stuff going on, and like I said, you, you, you've got this whole thing of people saying, oh, gods can't do that because I don't give permission. You have scientists saying, oh, gods can't do that because we can't test that gods are real. Sure you can't. Like I said, hold up, a, you know, hold up an answer crystal. Anybody, anywhere, for any reason can do it. And when you sit there, and especially like I said, you put it on a tripod where nobody's holding it. And you ask your answers and you don't have to verbalize it. You just hold, you know, hold the image and the idea in your head. And you're going to get an answer. That's moving beyond anything except for psychic or spiritual energy. And yet, that isn't provable, but answer crystals are like 10,000 years old. Science turns down 10,000 years of evidence. Christians, Catholics, Jews, and Muslims turn down 35,000 years of evidence of the aboriginals of Australia alone 
being alive and walking around and claiming that the planet is only 6,000 years old and everything else is fake unless they say so. And they literally walk around and they murder and they kill. Okay? I mean, I'm rather, I'm rather surprised that no Islamic person has, has made any kind of threat of killing me when I have shown that that whole entire thing that they worship and they believe and they do is the same kind of farce and was created by the same people who created the Bible. Okay? They don't have anything. They did, never did. They are not special. Everything they do is anti-God. Okay? So you have all of this stuff where the very truthful people are literally, you know, chastised by societies and it goes so far back that in a very hilarious type of situation here to try and, you know, catch on this, um, in the free will bit where I'm talking about it and think about how many times some preacher gets up there and starts screaming that I prophesized the end times on October 12th of 2012. 2012 goes past, nobody cares that the guy didn't get the prophecy. Well, he got up there and admitted it and let's say a million people saw that prediction or heard that prediction. They all laugh at him saying, oh, it's not true, it's not real. They are now putting energy out for him not to have his prophecy. Most of the prophetic stuff I was told in 1960, 58 years ago, has never been told to anyone else. It is in my writings of my journals, it is in my notes, it is my understandings and things like that. But I don't walk around and tell people, partially because, like I said, I'm not allowed, as a Revelation 2.17 person, I'm not allowed to collect followers. And I was informed that, yeah, you are not to collect followers, you're not going to have many friends in life. If ever in your life you have an actual real friend, it would be quite amazing. At two years of age, I had just been given the, the Leonard, this is an extremely physically abusive person, and I was told the amount of friends that I had at that point in time was the amount of friends I would have when I walk off this planet and I finish, hit, have hit the recycling button and walk off. Zero friends. Yeah. If you look in my past, you'll see that when I left Southern California and moved to Tahoe, I did not drag a bunch of those friends with me. A couple of people that were involved in the psychic stuff I was doing were, were you know, transferred up to South Lake Tahoe. When they, when they went their separate ways, I went my separate way. And, you know, other than the occasional people that have actually been part of prophetics, I have not bothered to try and reconnect with a lot of those people of my past because most of them are, are too much about socializing and having fun and pretending, you know, the rose-colored 13, 14 years old using tarot cards and learning about them and understanding that they were symbolic of answers. They were not the actual answers. There's nothing evil to them. There's nothing bad to them. And, and all of that, but a very, very straightforward rule is that if you know something about your future, you have the ability to change it. Now, I explained this earlier in the math of ESP stuff. So what happens? You have all of these people running around screaming, it can't be, it can't be, it's not gonna, and you have one person saying, oh, it is. The energy is greater that it won't happen than will. You are now in the position where you don't have any choice because I have done things that I have not put out to you that, hey, guess what? Yes, I did put out videos saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You, know. you have to look at what truthfulness is and you have to look at what the free will is because it's free will to listen to mainstream facade, fake fronts, and go ahead and believe that stuff and tell somebody who is truthful to shut up. That's free will, folks. You are choosing to go the wrong path. And there are many